free, Julia had a day off from work, so we decided to go and explore the city for a bit. There are many thrift shops in Yvaskla, so we decided to check out a few in the city center. We both found some really cheap, good quality clothing at UF. After exploring a few in the city center, we wanted to check out Kirpirila, which is a thrift shop a little outside of the city center. We had to take the bus and chose to pay by Linky, which is a mobile app you can download and pay for your ticket before even entering the bus. The thrift shop was really big and I ended up buying this really cool photo album, which is according to the book from around 1931. If you collect moving cups, you can find a few here, but they are still pretty expensive. After we were done, we rented an electrical scooter and headed back towards the city center. We wanted to get afternoon tea at Tay Lady, but we wouldn't have time to relax, so we went for ice cream instead. We went back to Yuli's apartment to rest before heading out for dinner. We ordered pizza and brought it to Lotaku Harbor, where a cute duck we named Dolly wanted to keep us company. The moment we opened the pizza box, Dolly went from a sweet duck to a fearless hunter. The once cute Dolly jumped up from the water and almost stole our whole pizza. We moved away from the water and enjoyed the great atmosphere and live music from the restaurant boats. Julia had the next day off as well, so we went to experience some of the culture Yvaskla has to offer. First off, we went to Toivolan Vanhapiha. Toivola is an old courtyard from the 19th century where you can find the only intact 19th century wooden buildings in Yvaskla. And there are seven buildings in total. The courtyard offers a restaurant, different craftsmen stores, arts and museums. You can join a guided tour, workshop or one of the many events they host throughout the year. We had lunch before going to Tomoyarvi, which is a nice lake where we relaxed a little before heading to Kangang Sauna. This was my first sauna experience and it was definitely worth the 11.50 euros. For those of you who saw my last vlog knows that I didn't have my wallet, but Yuli was kind enough to lend me money throughout my stay. We were lucky enough to have the sauna all by ourselves and the woman that worked behind the counter was really sweet and tried her best to help us even though she was really nervous to speak English. We both rented a towel and relaxed in their two saunas, the ice tub and drank a whole lot of water. After an hour and a half we went back to Yuli's apartment. We decided to have dinner at the beach and chill there for a while enjoying the sunset before heading back for the night. Yulia was working the next day, so I went to explore on my own again. I walked a little around in the city and then I met up with Yulia while she was working outside giving brochures. She gave me a self-guided tour of the Green Loop. The city of Yvaskla has developed many green spaces in and around the city center. But it's also possible to see many other exciting sites such as art or one of Alvaralto's many buildings, or you might want to stop at their many exercise spots. There's no specific place you have to start, so you can choose where you want to go first. I have already explored some of the locations in the Green Loop, therefore I chose to go in the opposite direction of where I walked in my last vlog. I walked the Toriyoki Nature Trail, a around 3 km long path where it's possible to see flying squirrels. I didn't see any, but maybe you have more luck. The path made me forget that I was in the middle of the city, and it is, in my opinion, a really nice walk if you want to get a little break from the city. After enjoying the nature, I decided to go back home and relax a little before Yuli came back. And before we were going to head out of the city for a short road trip, we decided to check out one of the survey points of the Struve Geodatic, a UNESCO World Heritage Site that lays on the top of Oravivari Hill. It is located around 40 minutes from Ivaskla by car. Yvaskla has a good arrangement called share cars. After 16.30 on weekdays and in the weekends, you can rent an electrical car for 8 euros an hour or 56 euros a day. This is something that not many knows about, and also something they probably don't advertise that much since there are only 3 cars for rent. You have to register through a web page, but this is only in Finnish, giving us quite a bit of a headache. 
After the registration, you can go and pick up the car in the city center and open the car through the registration and drive to your destination. By the looks of it, we were the only ones renting a car that evening. You can park at the bottom of the hill when arriving. We spent around 30 to 45 minutes to reach the Orivivari Triangulation Tower. There was a nice path and in the steepest parts there were stairs. There is a spectacular view over Finland's second largest lake, Payana, when you reach the top of the tower. We enjoyed the view at the top all by ourselves. When we drove back home, we got a beautiful sunset and this was the perfect ending to my trip to Yavaskla. The next day I left at 6 in the morning and walked to this train station. I prepared myself for a long trip back home, where I had to take a detour to Lati before switching for a train to Rovanemi. <laughs>